They're always pretty to see. Many communities are planning their own 4th of July and of course the fireworks as well. Maybe you're planning your own picnics and barbecues, but along with the fun comes the chance of danger for your pets. In today's Ask Dr. Mike segment, we're talking with veterinarian Dr. Mike Hutchinson about keeping our pets safe over the holiday. Good morning. <laughs> Good morning. I, I mean, we talk about this every year, but it is so important to keep in mind for uh, many reasons. Yeah. Uh, the food you've talked about before, barbecues. Absolutely. So you have to think of everything. We love the festivities. Right. But even small firecrackers can scare terrified dogs. And right. so the Humane Society say July 5th, the next day, is the worst day for lost pets. So they take off. They get scared. They're not only terrified, they're miles from home. I hope that there's identification on them if you're going to take your pets out. But my recommendation is leave them in. You have the hot weather to be concerned about, the barbecues, the barbecue grease, all of the things, the foods, the alcohol. All of those things are really bad for pets. This is like the worst holiday uh, It for is pets. for pets. I love the holiday, but for the pets, it's not so attractive. So leaving them home is probably the best advice. I go to the fireworks with my family, and we always see people there with animals on loose leashes. And the animals are terrified. I mean, they're just sitting here. You can tell as soon as the fireworks are going off, they're really nervous. So that's not good because then you could have bites, accidental bites. And for the dogs themselves, it's horrible. And then leaving them in the car isn't the right thing because right. a few minutes in a, in a car on a really hot, humid night. Which we're going to have. It could end up as an emergency. And so we don't want to do that. It's better to leave them home. So is it something that you can train? Let's say you have a new puppy and you think, oh, it's a puppy. I can train them to get used to the sounds. And to yes. Be, is it something that you can train them to get used to? Yes. If you have them before they're 16 weeks of age, okay. a lot of puppies, you can, you know, I always tell people socialize, socialize, socialize. But you can do sound, you can do different shapes, different colors, different lots of water, other animals, other people, take them everywhere and use loud sounds and maybe they'll get used to it. But some dogs actually develop their, those fears and it might be something inherent. So we can't be sure all, the, all of the time. We have tranquilizers for the pets that are really bad. You know, we have the thunderstorm phobias as well from pets. Right. Well, the fireworks are just all in one night, and that's horrible. What is it? Is it because their ears are more sensitive than ours, or do you? What is this? I think that it's probably that? lack of understanding. And if okay. they were in the wild, that's danger, and their reaction is to hide, right. to get away from it and hide. So that's a normal reaction in the dog, and. And if they get away, I always tell people, you know, when you're done with this segment watching PTL, maybe go and take some pictures, some recent pictures of your animals because you'll have them. A lot of people, you ask them for a recent picture of their animal, they don't have one. And their animal's lost and they don't have one. I love the chips, you know, for identification and good collars and things like that. The glow sticks I'm not a fan of because dogs like to chew them. They right. can get sick. They can get obstructions. I don't recommend the glow sticks for dogs. Okay. Well, let's say uh, if you're hosting a barbecue at your house and you're going to have a lot of people, which can create some anxiety for the animals as well, but um, having all that food there, what are things that absolutely they should avoid? So I just had one this weekend at our house and I was most fearful of the dogs. Five dogs at my house. So we put them away in a room, put them in their cabin. Channels. We just kept them away from the food. The grease in the barbecue, they start licking that, they can get pancreatitis, end up in the ER. Mm -hmm. All of the foods that people are dropping or not paying attention to. And all, almost all of those foods are not good for the dog. So, you know, we say, well, the hamburger is okay, but if it's a greasy hamburger, it's not okay. Right. So I always tell people the chicken bones are dangerous if they start to eat those, and they'll inhale them. They'll be gone before you know it. And then a lot of the desserts, some people use artificial sweeteners in desserts like xylitol, and that's toxic to a dog. Too much to worry about. So I always tell people, you know, Just keep them away. away. That's what we do because I worry too much. Easiest thing to do. Okay, well, let's talk about something else, especially this time of year. It is so hot out and we think the best way to cool off is to take a dip in the pool but also maybe the pond the lake if you're going camping sure is that safe for our dogs so we have to be careful and there was just a big story where a dog was fetching the stick and playing and it came out of the water it got it put its head down they took it to the ER and the dog ended up dying and wow. those kinds of things can happen very easily with the green, the pond scum, the blue green allergies. Okay. The blooms start in June and they go through the whole summer. So if that lake or pond has that, it looks like green paint or pea soup, I hate to say that, but you know what I'm talking about. Dogs just swimming through it can get it in their mucous membranes. They get off, they clean themselves off or they swallow water, especially if they're fetching sticks. And they can end up dying from that, wow. from the blue green, blue green allergy, pre, you know, 
causing mycotoxins, which is a horrible poison in dogs. And so every year in this area, Western Pennsylvania, Eastern Ohio, we hear about these dogs dying and, and it's just from that. So I say keep them out of the water if there's that pond scum and maybe not play fetch and things like that. Let them swim around, get some exercise, get them out of the water. Are there other things in ponds and lakes that we may not be able to see that could also cause? Well, we issues? have diseases like giardia and things that wild animals will urinate and it can end up in the water supply and they can pick up different diseases like leptospirosis and those kinds of things, but those aren't my biggest worries. I can treat those. Right. The, the pond scum, the blue-green allergy, if they get mycotoxin, we're probably going to lose them before we have time to save them and that's I was horrible. Say, are there any symptoms of that to yes. look out for? So in, in that case of that dog, it came out of the water, very vibrant dog playing fetch, had its head down, started to seizure and ended up dying. Like and almost immediately? Almost immediately. They can wow. start vomiting, they can get real dizzy and disorientated, almost drunk like and all of those signs can lead to death and so they're very, very serious and I, wow. I tell people to avoid it. Okay, use some caution for sure. Thank yes. you, Dr. Mike. You're welcome. Happy so, fourth. Happy fourth to you too. <laughs> and we want to thank Dr. Mike Hutchinson of Animal General in Cranberry. He's a regular contributor on the Ask Dr. Mike segment here on PTL. You can also listen to his podcast and find him on KDKA Radio.